Welcome to A Pint and Two Shots, coming to you from the G4 podcast studio with part-time pundit and average actor Stephen Purden and bringing a wealth of knowledge and questionable patter, it's our no-nonsense dafty Chris Toll. Completing our front three, it's the man himself. All the way from the tap end of Stevenson, it's Grado! Welcome to Pint Two Shots. It's a podcast, a FIFA podcast, episode three. We're here at the G4 Studios in Wisha. Join us today. We've got Shell Suit Bob, Crystal, it's myself, the champ, the Grado, and none other than Big Kyle Lafferty. Tra la 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 la. Big Kyle Lafferty. Tra la 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 la. Hello there, Kyle. How are you today? I'm all good. How are you? How'd you go to the weekend? 2 uh, 1. Great victory, so it was. By the way, you fucked my cunt. <laughs> I took Motherwell. It was a bad, it was a bad decision. Aye. Motherwell scored first, didn't they? Aye, yeah, Motherwell went one off, eh? It was a quick, to quick fire we, double. Uh, we deserved it. We battled them for majority of the game, so we did. But how you how you finding your second time at Comalik? It's good. Aye. Obviously, uh, it was important to get out of the championship. It's a tough league. Uh, no team wants to be in there, but um, we made hard work of it. Obviously. The manager came in in January. Um, mm. I think the team was sitting fifth, maybe. Aye. Um, so he came in, put his own players together, and we obviously got promoted. So it was good. See, when you, you got promoted, obviously, Kyle, you played against a, a centre half. Was it Ricky Little? Aye, did you ever come across Ricky Little? That's one of my best mates. Plays at Abroad. Plays at Abroad. Played him twice. Yeah, yeah. Is he any good? Oh. <laughs> 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 no, to be fair. And we're joined by Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Ricky's Ricky's he done well. Oh, he, see uh, that? People love that. Yeah, he's nice. He's done well. He gave me a hard game, so he did. Um, obviously, I didn't score against him, but he was uh, he's good. Right, never mind that shit. Tell us about um, <laughs> speaking of rugby part. One of the best days of my life. Oh. I'm sure it was May 2011. That for me was incredible. Do we all remember it? Oh, I do. Uh, so. <laughs> Don't. 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 Fuck yourself, I, think, I remember it well. I remember it well. Never turn the table after seven minutes or something. Aye, but last year's that's the only time you ever turned up in the first half. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> the big man fucking turned up all right that day. But well, I mean, because it was a matter of was it no? What was the deal again? Did Rangers just need to win, or was it a goal? Was it? Was I, think goal just, I, think I think we needed a win. We needed to win. Aye, aye, aye. We did. Was it not four and a half minutes aye. or something? You scored first, then Nazi scored. Nazi scored. scored. I scored then second. Then Lafferty scored. Then Yelovich, mm-hmm. and then me. What a day! Is that up there as one of your career, career highlights? Some of the matches that. Yeah, of course. Obviously, getting scoring a hat trick against anyone's obviously is nice, but for it to be the last day of the season to win the right. league it, it was obviously special for me but I remember the game we were 5-0 up and they scored and I was like oh no uh, <laughs> they're not going to come back and just like, so, I, honestly I was I remember it still it's strange how it, you, you feel that I remember no. like, obviously I don't say like support, but remember the 6-2 game at Parkhead when Rangers get the second goal I was like ah, that's it that's right. it they're going to come back and beat us man You've, you're never secure mm. in it you're not never ever secure in it but it's I wish they had come back that day, I'll tell you that for them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's why I named that day. It was kind of, I remember it well, me and all my mates were in the house and it was two months before I got married and we were all buzzing about the wedding and all that, we were all going on about the game and then just, you got you're so, it's weird you saying that because we were so relaxed, like watching it. You, you were at the game, you were oh, there no, that I day. I was shite myself. I really no, but that. after the f- three goals, ah, you like, party you know time. Aye, I mean? aye, ah, yeah, definitely. But what, made it, what made it even better as well is a policeman that I worked in McDonald's with mega mega Celtic fan was standing right in front I was in the, I was in the row B and he was in front of me for the full game so he just got pelted in front. it was brilliant honestly one of the why best why was a ever. mega Celtic fan at the Rangers he's a postman oh, he's a postman a post works at McDonald's <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about no he, he works at McDonald's postman I'm a postman so see a game like that Kyle right obviously we need to win to win the league right see a game like that yeah, good now. What's Walter Smith like before that? What's he like in the dressing room before the game? He didn't really say a lot. Walter was always one of those guys that whenever he did speak, every single person woke up, uh, obviously sat up and took mm-hmm. notice. He was probably the best man managing I've ever worked under. Mm-hmm. Um, he's done, obviously, he, he, sent, he gave me an opportunity to play for Rangers. Um, so... Like I have nothing bad to say about the man. He's probably one of the best managers I've ever worked mm-hmm. under. Um, and obviously, 
he's not here with us today, which is we're all devastated. But he, um, he just whenever he spoke, he just as I said, aura. yeah, it was yeah. He's just like a lord came into the room, just like. Uh, everybody but, says that around there, like when they spoke. I mean, yeah. even we, we've had the, we've been lucky enough to meet him a few times here, mm. and it's even the same for us civilians on the football players. Yeah, when right. he, he walks into like the blue room, like, then you just you, you just shut up and listen, didn't you? It says a lot whenever, obviously, me and John Sally are both yeah, yeah. both fans, kind of like respect him as well yeah, and right. what he's done. But That's it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just it a great was, man. It was more. You don't like to say that it was more than Rangers, but it was. He was probably he was one of the biggest faces in Scottish football yeah. ever since I've been a kid all the yeah. way right through, and you can tell that there was that mutual respect because of the friendship that he had with Tommy yeah. Burns and stuff like yeah. that, you know. So I'd be I'd be surprised to hear many Celtic fans yeah. saying anything bad about him yeah. because he was he was just a football guy. It just so happened that he was a Rangers guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Aye. Yeah. Well, as you say, Tommy Burns is the same. Like Celtic or Rangers fans, obviously respect him mm. massively as well. So. Oh, Aye, definitely, because when Tommy Burns went, it was like, I mean, I remember going down to Celtic Park and putting a scarf down when Tommy Burns had passed away, and the amount of Rangers fans that were there yeah. as well, and it was the it same was. with Walter, there was so many, was. do you know what I mean, Celtic it's fans as well, definitely. Mm. Yeah. But were you ever on the wrong side of Walter, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> Aye, in fact, let's talk about that. So, uh, we, play, we were playing Man U at the uh, Ibrox, so the day before I was was told I'm starting, so I was like, buzzing Man U, grew up as a Man U fan as well. And uh, we stayed in Moore Hall the night before. So we that morning of the game, we drove to the Murray Park. And we get, I was getting off the bus and I was messing around with one of one of the young lads. And I've carried on messing around into the the reception. But I'm holding a magazine in my hand. And we both fell. But instead of letting go of the magazine, I've held, held it. And my hands hit the wall. And my fingers like that. Oh. I was like, fuck. So I went and seen the doctor, and the doctor's trying to put my finger back in. It wasn't going. He's yeah. like, this isn't going. Anyway, I've, uh, the doctor went and spoke to Walter, and uh, he just came in, and I'm lying in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> he just came in and went. <laughs> there, was a, there was another time, though, wasn't there? There was another time that when you fell full of water. Oh, I know what you're going to bring oh, up. Oh, he's, he's been choked to bring this he up. He also fell foul of Charlie Mulgrew this day. <laughs> if, if I don't, if I don't get myself mistaken, <laughs> so <laughs> that was the day that Charlie Mulgrew knocked you out with a miss. Kyle, 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 feel free not to answer it. Feel free not to answer it. We were told the day, uh, the day off the game, they have two players. And Charlie Mulgrew, probably the main player. I was like, fuck this. I'm going to take it in my own hand. <laughs> so, no, obviously, it's just one of those things that... Listen, we went on to win the game 2-0. So, uh, uh, that's the main thing. Do you, you, yeah. do you ever watch your back on YouTube and that? I'm not sure you guys for that. The last time I'd have to chill over <laughs> The amount of times people comes up to me and goes, do you remember this? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I do, yeah. But no... Uh, like, now I feel like a pure dick. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you're one of the guys, so, you know what I mean? They're, all, they're always under four foot. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it was just one of those things that it just happened. And even after the game, I remember coming in. And uh, did you know that you had kind of like in the back of your mind? Yeah, obviously. Go, oh, but I didn't, think, I didn't think nothing of it. Aye. Charlie sent off and we went on to win the game. Like win the game. I was like, oh, brilliant! I remember coming in after the game, and uh, obviously the lads I wasn't involved. They were obviously up in the players' lounge watching it on Sky, like on, on Sky or uh, whatever it was on. And they came down like, mate, you're getting key out. I went, for what? They're like, what do you mean for what? I'm like, what did they do? <laughs> yeah, honestly, they're talking about bands and fines and everything. I was like, I didn't do nothing. And then obviously watching the back, I was like, fuck. <laughs> I, I couldn't, couldn't get my head around it when they were like, saying to me, like, they're coming for you, you're getting key out. And I'm like... So what, what, what you're saying is it looked worse than uh, it, 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 it felt worse than it, it was. It was a, it was a good, in, in wrestling terms, it was a good sell. Well, it's it's a, good sell. sell. Uh, a good sell, brother. Yeah. Well, I remember meeting oh, um, Kenny McDowell. He got Charlie's number. And I was had the ring him, apologised. I was like, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> so, uh, hey, it's Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Hello. But I remember meeting Charlie in October, maybe two, three weeks after. And we obviously we had a drink and had a laugh about it, but it was uh, just one of those things that kind of 
Well, I forget about it, but thanks for printing it up. Thanks right. for bringing it up, eh? Yeah. Listen, I'm the, I'm the one she like, fan. I get to have a couple of digs at you, alright? Give me a break. <laughs> but, um, what do we want to talk about? Do we want to talk about others? Because I was thinking about Charlie Mulgrew, right? He's, he's playing with Dundee United, right? Aye. Obviously, Scott told yesterday. Was no, but Char- very, Charlie very... wasn't playing, though. No. Charlie wasn't playing, but you're thinking that. Was the anyone? What? Was anyone playing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're watching that game yesterday. I had to turn it off at 2 0. 2 0 up on the half, and he was raging. Hey, hey, Credo does this thing, right? We, we've got a group chat, right? And he's done it for years, right? It gives toll the ammunition, right? Yeah. <laughs> See, when Celtic are playing, he'll be the first one to bring it up in the group chat. Aye. And then obviously Celtic canter it yesterday. He's like, oh, oh that's wow, that's Jack. And I'm like, you've started this. Yeah. Why are you bringing it up? And he just texts me back. He just texts me back. Sorry. <laughs> the text we got yesterday was, oh, I'm raging that, uh, that Kyogo's nearly as good as Cholak. Yes. <laughs> Ten minutes later, He's Patrick. I'm like, oh, I sure wish he was half as good as Cholak. Nah, like, you know what I mean? But, but Kyle, you've obviously, you've, you've played Rangers at Ibrox this season. Celtic's went to Rugby Park. How do you compare both flip teams when you played against both of them? I think both teams are miles ahead of anyone else. Mm-hmm. I think Hearts are probably the ones closest to them. Um, but I think it's the players that Celtic signed. Like two years ago, no one knew about them. Mm-hmm. The players that the, the managers brought in, they've all gelled together. They're they're playing well. The, like I remember, we were four 0 down when we played them two weeks ago. 4 0 down, and Joe Hart runs and sprints to the ball boy, gets the ball, puts it down as a goal kick, and Aye. plays. Mm-hmm. Everything's 100 mile an hour, mm-hmm. and they've got them, the manager's got them playing probably the best football a Celtic team's played for a long, long time. You'll, you'll know, like, probably right. since Tommy Bombs, actually. Yeah, honestly, there's no stopping them. Um, I remember last season players or people saying, if you get 60 minutes, and it's a uh, you're, you're in the run. game. Uh, they're they're finished uh, after uh, sixty minutes, but they've kicked on the season. And yeah, I, I don't think there's no there's, when Celtic's on their game. I mean, just on the game. I think there's no stopping no matter uh, who, who's in your team or what we line up. It's always going to be difficult to defend against both of them. Would you make a just while we're talking about game managers' time? But you listen to talk sport. Or you listen to you're looking online. The, the stick that Jenner's getting <sighs> down south. Mm. There's a lot of folk hanging out that the, the talk was this morning. Is it you know? Is, is he on the slide? Is he on the decline? Is he going to get time? I want to ask: Do you think a big part of Gerard was Michael Beale and the fact that Michael Beale was now left? Is that is that a big thing? When I left Rangers, I uh, I done an interview and I did say Michael Beale is he he done a lot of a lot of the work. Um, Stephen Gerrard is a great manager. I think what he done from Rangers. When he came in until when he left, it was night and day. Um, but it's hard because it's a, it's a it's a tough league. Um, he did, he has signed a few players, um, and I, I think it'll take time for them players to obviously gel. Um, you just can't gel straight away. Um, I think it, it, he deserves a bit more time. Um, he, I th- I'm sure he'll pick up the results that they need to get up the table. But working with Michael Neal. Or Michael uh, Bill, he was he was brilliant. Was he? But, uh, man managing and going into the smallest detail. Aye. He he went into the smallest and he was very very good. Um and and there was like no surprise he went to like into managing thing. um into QPR and I think he's he's doing he's doing well there. So. Mm-hmm. Um. Do you think a, a big part of what's happening with Gerard down there is maybe Michael Bill? Stopped him for getting ahead of himself as well. He was able to maybe rein him in a wee bit. You know what I mean? He was like a good influence in that way. Yeah, I, th- I think so. Yeah, I think um, an old head mm-hmm. that was there. Like Michael didn't. I think he was over in was it Argentina or somewhere? Brazil. Ah, he was in Brazil. Uh, so he's been he's been about he's as well. And he's, he's in Brazil, wasn't he? Wasn't yeah, he was. Brazil, wasn't he? Right? Mm-hmm. Um, he's so. been about as well, mm-hmm. and he's picked obviously picked up different ideas from where he has been. But um, I think. He will, he will be missing him, um, mm-hmm. but I think there's obviously Gary McAllister there, and uh, and he's got finally you've had experience with the boy with the hair. What do Austin, you call him? McFeel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That narrows it down a bit. Do you know what he looks weird for one? 
But he th- you look at that fella and you go, he doesn't laugh. I go, I don't know why else. I fucking somebody that fixes guitars or something. Like that. <laughs> I have one of the sons of anarchy. Ah, ah, you see what? Is he like? Is, no, he, is he asked, he's fat boy. Austin is he's a really like he's a top guy. Um, obviously, when I when I came out about the gambling, he was right. he was there on on speed dial. He was probably he was probably one of the biggest people there that was always there for me. Really? Um, when I came out, he he helped me massively, and I'd, sometimes I'd, I'd have a text from him to see if, if everything was going fine as well. So obviously he's a top top guy. I have nothing but great words to say about him, but. What he does on the football side, he's, he's very good. Like he's, he he goes into detail as well with corners, throw-ins. Oh, he's a specialist at that. Yeah, he's, he's really really well. And I think Aston Villa scored maybe when he first came in, maybe four or five goals from his uh, set plays. And so he, he's good. Um, but I think years ago there wasn't there was there was nothing like that about, and obviously in the last year or two. They've, they've came in and a lot of people has set plays coaches now and stuff like that there so like Austin he's really good he's done really well with Northern Ireland as well and obviously he's kicked on I think he he went to Scotland I think he was going to go to Scotland and ended up getting COVID in the first trip or Aye. something and he couldn't go really? but he um, he obviously moved to Aston Villa as well Aye. so it's good he's he's climbed up the ladder well and he's, yeah. he's doing well so to answer your question Graham I think he is in East football <laughs> no I mean oh, yeah, he's I in think East football he's in the <laughs> Nah, he hates it. He hates football. Bet you feel alright, Dick. You're mentioning there that obviously he's in Northern Ireland as well. He's been in Northern Ireland. It must have been a great experience for you playing at the Euros um, a couple of years back. Or, or last year, in fact. It was last year, wasn't it? 2016. Do you know what he's going to do? Go up his Wikipedia or something. How many come in a day, man? I did, but I had to keep on scrolling to get by the fucking picture. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously it was Northern Ireland's first major tournament for a long time. <laughs> so it was Northern Ireland's first major tournament for a long time. You must have been immensely proud of obviously being a part of that squad and, and being the major catalyst to get them to the, the finals in the first place. Yeah, I think it was something that the, the country needed. Um I remember going to games that were losing two, three nil to Andorra. Yeah, teams. Oh, uh, uh, no disrespect to them, but they were awful. Um, we we oh, we've had an accident. Sorry, sorry. We went through we went through managers that introduced players that ended up playing representing in the Euros. But once Michael O'Neill came in, he I think it was thirteen thirteen games it took him to to win a game. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people was calling for his head, but the board. They seen something. The players loved Michael, um, and then from 2014, we absolutely just kicked on. We picked up results away from home, at home. Um, Some of the results again with the greatest respect to Northern Ireland. Yeah. You were no, beating teams like, that yeah. you couldn't have been anywhere near beating. You know what I mean? Like, on paper, but out of all the nations, we we probably have not the worst, but. Not the fanciest. Like there's obviously Johnny Evans, Steve Davis, ones that's played in the Prem. But we didn't have a lot of Premiership players. I think mm-hmm. the, the squad that went to the Euros. I think there might have been five, six players mm-hmm. that was in League One, League Two. But we were a proper a team, great unit. Proper, proper team. Unit. We mm-hmm. we enjoyed the night team out. Spirit, man. Yeah, team spirit yeah, goes a long way. You know what it mean? does. It does. Um, we enjoyed the night out whenever we we had one. The manager included. We all went out together. Um, but we were a proper proper team and we never we never gave up. We knew what we were playing for and then when I got closer and closer to qualifying we were like this is, we're doing this. Aye. And we ended up doing it, so it was it was a massive achievement for, for the country. The reason I ask you is because your interview after he's qualified on Sky Sports was fucking oh, amazing. That, <laughs> that was you know I mean, who do you class. want? Brazil, Argentina? No, I was pissing myself. <laughs> but you know, it's one of the ones that, because you're Kyle Waffer and I'm a Celtic fan, I couldn't share it. I wasn't sharing it with my pals. <laughs> you know I was what? sitting in the house like, ah, it's like I was like, he's a good big guy. I actually had Twitter back then. I see the amount of people message him saying, 
You're thick as shit. Oh. <laughs> Brazil's not even in Europe. Oh my <laughs> and you know what? Most of them had the green and white tops on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. But honestly, I got cane for that as well. For like people just saying, "Mate, you're absolutely stupid." Honestly, Brazil and Argentina is not even the Euro. You're not playing against Messi. I was like, "Ah, yeah, I've made a mistake there." <laughs> honestly, honestly. But, it's like Grado nearly fought off his chair. I'm not sure about that. What were you doing? You're right. Well, he heard, he heard that Northern Ireland had qualified. Tell me, Kyle, talking about Northern Ireland, right? We all know how good this guy is, right? But how much a professional is he? He's Stephen Davis. Oh, I know. Is he the ultimate pro? Is, it, or is, he, just yeah. that, is he just lucky? Is he annoying nah. that he's that professional? Is he annoying? He's not really... Like, I've probably been with more players that's been proper professional. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he eats what he wants. Is he? He's not one of them that'll pass the salad and stuff like that. Where like, okay, he eats it. He looks after himself, but not massively. Um... But I think it just, it's just down to pure ability. Mm-hmm. He's a good mate of mine, and um, people always say I'm prob- probably biased, but he's by far the best player I've played with, and I've played with some very good players. But yeah, he's, but like, he's better than Pablo Dybala. At the, at the time, like, I played with Pablo Dybala. Yes. Aye, damn right, what are you on about? He fucking is, Like I played with Pablo when he was 18. I mean, that's mental. Um, How good was he then? He was good. Aye. Like, he was very good. But he, I th- don't think he scored for maybe... I think it was 14 months he hadn't scored a goal. And mm-hmm. once he got one, he he, just went, off. He, he went on. But, like, you could see that he was going to be a world-class player. Um, but, Abel was just... He's different. Like, mm-hmm. he, obviously, four weeks ago, I was... On the Friday, I was pulled by the manager. And I was like, listen, we're playing a different formation. You're going to stay on Davis. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best players in the league after Man Mark him off the park. But yeah, he, he's it's just pure ability. Um, he never panics. Um, he's just his first touch. He, he knows every like he knows where everyone is around the pitch before Football he receives the ball. Nine. Yeah, everything. Mm-hmm. He knows the second pass, the third pass. He knows everything um, mm-hmm. before he gets the ball. Um, Obviously, I'd love to see him playing more for Rangers. I think that the benefit massively for him from being yeah. in the squad. But see, the weekend when he comes on, scores that goal. It's just uh, yeah. beautiful. It's like, I mean, how long is he going to play for? Do you, do you think he's still even got a couple of years in him yet? I mean, what is he? Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. He's just anyway. just a pop. Uh, but I know, yeah. <laughs> he's always, he's always gave it. Oh fuck me, that's me finished. <laughs> <laughs> You're running around like a 21 year old. Uh, and he's going over, he kicks and all for him. Games, not exactly, that, yeah. It's like Brian Prunty. Every season he ends up being an awkward. Oh, this is my last season. And he's away again. But I think what he does, he doesn't need his legs. Aye, aye. Because he, he he's got the range of passing, he controls games. So he's definitely got another, aye, cause another he's, year at least. He's second spell at Rangers, you're looking at him going, he's developed his game into the mm-hmm. way he should. Uh, I think that's the mark you had. A really good footballer. See, like mm-hmm. going back through the years, I'm talking like Rude Hullet, uh, Lothar Mateus, the players that could fucking what, adapt their game mm-hmm. because their legs were maybe what they, what they didn't used to be. Mm-hmm. Even going back to Chris Sutton, like remember he fell back into defence at the end of his mm-hmm. career. Mm-hmm. Was, Beyond Dublin as well, didn't they? Uh, yeah, yeah. Back mm-hmm. right. it's, mm-hmm. I think that's a marquee, a great player. You know what it's like? It's like the Madonna of football. <laughs> <laughs> when when styles change, they <laughs> change a long way. <laughs> That's what it's all about. <laughs> Cut that out of an off it. We need a bullet with every position for Rangers. Right? <laughs> he did, I yeah. Know. Aye, that's true. So talk us through um, your second spell at Rangers. Right? Obviously a very successful first spell. Uh, t- I mean, signing for Rangers two times, you're obviously your boyhood hero. You just bought at Man United, Man United as well. But how, when you look back at it now, what do you think about your spell at Rangers, your second spell? <sighs> Probably a disaster. It was, it was, it was as bad as that. As bad I mean, as you had such oh, a good okay. season at Hearts. Uh, you were flying at yeah. Hearts. And I know that the only club that you ever would have left Hearts for was Rangers. Yeah. Um, you you quite sell at Barcelona or somebody came in and they'd have been away. No, like, now I can say I probably shouldn't have left Hearts. I was playing good football. I was happy. If you want to say I was 
the main man. I was like mm-hmm. they relied on me massively for my goals, mm-hmm. and I think that was whenever I produced my goals and probably performances the most. But as Grado says, whenever Rangers comes in, Aye. there's no brainer, mm-hmm. and obviously I had to go. But like I, I think the first two months, like I scored my debut. Mm-hmm. Europe scored, Europe scored, Europe scored, Europe scored, Europe as well. Yeah, scored. Mm-hmm. So my first game was uh, UEFA in the in mm-hmm. the qualifying. Play, came on, came on twice. But my full debut again was against Motherwell. Scored two. Three each two game. Was it three? No, sorry, five. three each. Yeah, was yeah. Oh. They scored in the last minute. Oh, was so I've start, I've started well. The first six to eight weeks, I was brilliant. Scored mm-hmm. against the uh, Villarreal as well. And then. Uh, Honestly, I, I was a shadow of the player. Even in training, I don't know if my confidence was just gone. I I just thought I wasn't good enough to be here. The players I was in the the squad and the team, I just thought I wasn't good enough to be here. I was miles off it. I wasn't playing a lot. I think playing under Stephen Gerrard played a massive part in it as well. Intimidating? I think so. Because I, I always wanted to impress him and uh, you, uh, you know how, how it is whenever you try too much mm-hmm. or too hard it doesn't happen for you and I was missing chances that I was putting away in my sleep and I was like what is going on mm-hmm. so I was, I'm not blaming anyone else but all those different things played a massive part but I didn't help myself either that I was I probably just thought I'm back at Rangers I have made it did you, see, uh, did did you, you and Gerald speak about that did you speak to him there was, I always spoke about a game. Um, Did you say you're putting me off? <laughs> so just <laughs> <fuck off. laughs> no, I did. Yeah, like I spoke. I always went back to the game we lost against <laughs> against Livingston. We're away from home. We lost one 0 One 0 It was the game me and Alfredo. Dolly Mangus would. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Mm-hmm. So me and Alfredo, one of the games we played two up top, and the whole team were miles off it. I was miles off it. So that was the last game I, I started. Um, yeah, last game I probably played, mm-hmm. uh, well, except for five, ten minutes at the end. But I always brought myself to having that conversation with him about this game. He's like, mm-hmm. listen, everyone, let it go. Everyone was shit that day. Mm-hmm. Not blaming you for one performance. But that was that was the game that it changed. Aye. So I was like, what is it? Mm. And as I said, I was miles off it. I was, in, I just felt, I was just there, like I won a competition. Mm-hmm. Being there, training with my, uh, my heroes in training, I was, wasn't was myself. The banter was always there. I was always one of them. I was in the dressing room enjoying myself, but just in the training pitch, I was completely different. Was, was there too much carry-on in your head? Yeah, like uh, anyone that knows me, I'll always enjoy a carry-on. But whenever, yeah. on Saturday... Midweek, once I once I cross the line, I'm I'm fully focused. But I don't know what it was, but it was just. Cause the thing is, man, like as you're saying there, when 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 you were at Hearts, I think a lot of Rangers fans, like maybe yourself as well, Greg, a lot when we heard you were coming back, it was a kind of no-brainer. Yeah. Because you were fat, you were like you said, you were like the main man at Hearts. Yeah. Scored quite a few against Celtic as well. I, mean, I was I was glad to see the back here at Hearts. To be honest, yeah, no, you. like I think I ended up scoring was a four. Sure, you used to put our unbeaten run. Yeah, I was for nothing. Didn't just want nothing. I was fucking hammered. Yeah, like, didn't help. We were playing in a jungle, right? Enough, yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It was, it was hard, but yeah, done well, mm-hmm. and I was, I was happy. Um, obviously, got the gambling shit that hanging over my shoulders for mm-hmm. years, off my chest, and everything was just so good. Um, I was just. Enjoying my football again. Mm. Um, I came off from Hearts, uh, or not Hearts, Mo- uh, Norwich didn't really play, so I was back playing football, scoring goals, and went and took the move, and it, it just crumbled, honestly. Do you, think, do you think it's like you went, you were expecting to go back to Rangers the way Rangers was before you left it? And when you've got there, has there maybe been a culture change from then <laughs> until when you rejoined? Um, yeah, probably. Like I, I walked in, I remember because obviously leaving the first time, there's a lot of members of staff that worked around the place. They had the, they obviously made redundant. Mm-hmm. 
but I mean that was happening and I was like I'm going to go back here and I'm going to recognise no one mm. went in through the gates security yard garden oh, all man. the ladies up in the canteen was all there so it was brilliant so you must have gotten in for an agency uh, yeah I know yeah <laughs> come for a day but it was like everything was perfect and I started so well as well but honestly it was just I don't know what happened. No, it was just like I know I probably not many people plays gets a chance to play with Rangers once, 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 never mind twice, and obviously it was pretty well. much the same. Though, see, like with, with the greatest respect to Chris Boyd and Kenny Miller, it was kind of the same for them as well when yeah. they went back. You know what I mean? Miller obviously never learned after his second one. He went back again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's driving vehicles these days, and if you need a tyre, get your body down to Performance Tyres. They supply a wide range of high-quality performance tyres at low, 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 low prices. They've got free branches, Annie's Land, Air and Kermanagh, and they cover all four points of the central belt. They're going to stock all the major tyre brands, Pirelli, Hankook, Avon, Uniroyal, Yokohama, Continental, Goodyear, and so many more. They supply for cars, 4 before's, light trucks and vans. They supply all-season tyres, winter tyres and run flat tyres for all seasons. They provide a professional tyre fitting services and other branches have up to the minute fitting equipment to take care of those precious alloys and they provide the highest standard of computerised wheel balancing and accurate wheel alignment. They are also the main supplier for LASA and you can get more details about Performance Tires at the website, which is performancetires.net. And if you want any more information, just phone the number. It's as easy as this. It's 0141-954-9344. You can also click the link in the description attached. Performance Tires. Thank you. What about Marielos? What's he like to train me in, like, in the dressing room and stuff? Is... Is he a wee mental guy? He's probably <laughs> he's probably me <laughs> times ten. Aye. Honestly. I'm not talking like, about goal returns. <laughs> <mate. laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get the fuck Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> See, when we were going and like, these shots are going to do a No. Sit at peace, though. Sorry. Like, sit nice. He, Stop being so nice. What was a bad for me? <laughs> like, he never spoke English. We Do don't. I still don't even know to the day if he speaks English. Do you think he puts that on? He must know a bit English. We, we get told a story about Nakamura when he was at Celtic. Right? I were talking about Manelos. Uh, no, no, <laughs> listen, listen, no, but wait a minute. And Gareth Bale, Gareth Bale as well at Real Madrid. Aye. Yeah. Always mm. claim never to speak the language, but yeah. apparently the two of them were fluent. Yeah. You mm. know what I mean? So it's just a, a opportunity to dodge the media. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, but so like me and him, me and Alfredo was so close. But we always had Daniel Candace. Mm-hmm. Uh, so can I so tell you what you said and all that? So, um, I don't know who it was. Someone came in. I think it might, might have been Devo when he came in first. He's like, this is the weirdest relationship ever. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't understand you, but you understand him, but you're everywhere. Uh, and I was like, going for uh, coffees and everything. Uh, <laughs> no, it'd be funny, imagine Candace was just making up the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying it's like, sure pricks with you. <laughs> No, Alfredo's one of the funniest guys Aye. I've ever played with, honestly. How do you think this current situation with him is going on the now? You think, do you think he'll come back for us? Do you think he's still going to be a Rangers player? Can he turn that around? I hope so. But since Alfredo's been there, what's he been, four or five years? Well, he's longer than that now, sure. Is, is it? No, is it not about 26? So, so, it was, K- K- Kishina, Kishina brought him in, didn't Aye, so, no. he? Was that 18? God, that must no. be. Is that 17? I- 17? Ah, it's five years. Five years. Five years, eh? So... I've erased that from my memory. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Alfredo... Do well, I me to tell you about it? <laughs> Kyle's talking to him. Sorry, man. So, Alfredo's always <laughs> been number one. Aye. Like, he's... Up, no matter, like... Any other situation, striker mm-hmm. or any other player gets sent off five times in half a season, they're, they're out the door. Aye. But Rangers needed Alfredo. Because mm-hmm. they had me in second choice. So they, needed <laughs> <laughs> so they, they needed him. Uh, so he was getting sent off, and not much was happening to him because uh, he was a massive he knew focal he'd be point of the back team. In yeah. when his suspension yeah. was up. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's gonna it's gonna it's a different stance for him now because 
Cholak is scoring. He's got Cholak. six ah. and seven or five and seven. It's like Rangers know. Five and seven. He's got so mm. they know how to play now. Yeah, with, with him. Yeah, so mm-hmm. which is it's going to be a massive. We'll see how much he wants to be there. Aye. And I hope mm-hmm. he, he comes out and he, he, he works his socks off and becomes the player we knew yeah. last year before he got injured or the year before as well. Because every Rangers fan is, adores him. Mm-hmm. I love him the bits. And he's one of the nicest guys and funniest guys I've ever played with. But it's it's going to be different for him now. Mm-hmm. Like he, He's always going to carry a bit of weight because that's the type of player and I don't think he'd be that player if he... Was like myself, mm-hmm. uh, so he'll find he's find himself in a different situation than he's ever felt ever injured. So it's he's the ball's in his court, really. Yeah, isn't it? It's uh, how yeah, he reacts. It definitely it. is, and right. the manager obviously everyone thought dropping him for um, ESV ESV, game was a yeah. massive shout, mm-hmm. and it could have backfired. And mm-hmm. obviously, Gio would have had questions to be asked, but mm-hmm. it worked out. And as I said, Cholak scoring goals every week now, so it's it's gonna. He's going to have to work hard, Alfredo, and mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he will, and he'll he'll come back better and stronger. And I would, I, I would love to have been in a coffee shop one day and big, big Kyle sitting there with Alfredo and da- Daniel's in the middle just telling him oh, what he right. said. How I would, I can't, I, I, I can't get out my head. It's brilliant. I remember I was flying to London with my with my wife, and Alfredo was going off to Colombia, I think it was, and I seen him, and I walked over. I was like, it's going to be a handshake, and that's it. He's like. Ah, Lafferty. <laughs> How is your family? Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> when, did you, when did you speak English? And he went... <laughs> <laughs> so the mask's not Honestly, it, 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 it was like... Uh, he literally just way, spoke he, English and then stopped. Uh, I think he comes across as a fly bastard. <laughs> I, I, know, I bet he is. Aye. Right. But um, no, he's, he's his face is on all. It seems he's see when all his pants. It seems he's been subbed or something. Like he's almost got to go, and he's sitting there with his fucking face trapped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, f- I yeah. love all that. I love all that. Yeah, aye. no, he's he's a brilliant guy. Um, he's box office. Yeah, give my phone, man. What's the name of man? See if I phoned him. Aye. First thing he'd say, ah, funny. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> boy, he says funny in a different, li- <laughs> different language. Different language. <laughs> but Kyle, okay, talking about characters, right? Looking through all the clubs you've played for, right? You played under Reno Gattuso. Aye. Right, can we need to talk about that, right? Reno Gattuso, right? Obviously, Rangers connection there and that, but the guy's a bit of a legend, isn't he? I mean, what was, what was that like? So I remember going to see on, and that's where you went after Rangers, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. Well, so I flew to uh, Switzerland, got picked up, brought him, brought me to the hotel that the 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 team stays at, and we were sitting there. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, all nervous. <laughs> Yeah. So it comes over. By the way, that's what they were like waiting in you. <laughs> 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 you're still inside. It's hard. It's hard. Oh, that's definitely it's more. No, it's not. <laughs> Stevie's like that. I wonder what he's driving. <laughs> <laughs> we boys. Fucking ridiculous. So um, he comes over because his wife's from Scotland. That's right. Ah, yeah, yeah, so yeah. anyway, he comes over, speaks, um, broken English, and he's like, yeah, sign, sign, I'm like. I haven't even seen what they've offered me yet. So, <laughs> so anyway, I bought, I bought, I bought, I bought, I just handed him a bit of paper. <laughs> sign. I was like, ah, okay, okay. So, I was out and then asked for what I wanted and they're like, oh, no. So I thought the deal was done. So Reno's went into the, the president and he's like, give him, give him. So I'm like, who owns this club? <laughs> <laughs> so, ended up um, signing and he was honestly the He's been the best captain I've played under. Any problems, he was straight in, sorting it out. A leader. For Christmas, he's obviously money. He's not. Aye. He's not short of money. He comes in, he's got all the players' um, dressing gowns with the number and initials on it. Italian leather uh, trainers with the now you're talking. The, the club uh, badge and the squad number on it. He just looks after the players. Perfect, like so good, and he's always he's always there. But he's intri- a fucking lunatic. <laughs> I'll tell you a story now. Aye. So, in training, he's 100 miles an hour, no talking. 
So obviously we're doing ladders and stuff like that there in the warm up. So I'm, he's at the front, I'm near at the back, and I'm talking to some of the lads, and he's like, Ah, Kylie! <laughs> <laughs> so me, me and Milo, we have a great relationship. Get on the phone! <laughs> <laughs> so he, um, he, he's like, Ah! Psst. I was like, Ah, oh, Followed him off. Go on again, speaking. He's like, Kylie! Shut it! Why? <laughs> Relax! So, again, Third time I'm speaking, he goes, boom! Like, fuck it, relax, man. So, <laughs> I haven't spoke after. So, anyway, like two days later, I'm like, ah. What? Fuck your I went, <laughs> I went and spoke to the doctor. I went, Doc, I can barely breathe here. He's like, what, did you get a knock or anything in June? I was like, no, nah, no. Nah. Clicked on me. I went, Reno hit me a punch and like a slap on the, on the chest in the warm up one day. Like two or three days ago, he's like, I'll be it. Actually, we, we fractured him with a chest. Oh, honestly, honestly. Really? I was up. <laughs> oh, great, I'm up to his chest. I'm up to his chest. He's like, uh, oh, go and tell him, I went, I ain't telling him. Because he'd, he'd end up hitting you again if you're moaning. But he was the, honestly, he's so good. But I, uh, so me and uh, me and the goalkeeper had a, a Palermo. So he so he went to Palermo and he signed me as a player. Um, so I went, enjoyed Palermo so much, and he lived in Milan with his obviously wife and kids. And me and my mate went up to Milan for for a weekend, and we went to his house and we're like, "Oh, give us one of your cars so we can drive around. We'll drop it off." He's like, "Aye, aye, aye." A 1984 X5. What? Guy. No, it's not 1985. But an old, old, old X5. Aye, aye, aye. I was like, give us one of your good ones. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is what we have. So, I was like, guy doesn't care about fashion at all. And honestly, he's got, I don't know how much money it is, but loads probably, but nothing, not fancy in the slightest, nice should, house and everything. Sure, there was a story that Gaza bought him like Versace suits or something like that. He took me to sign for it, he took him out, I he, was, he was away six months later, poor uh, Gaza, he's like that. Just sent some Italian <laughs> fella back home, he <laughs> wore the suits. So, um, took his X5 anyway, took us about three hours to do 20 mile. <laughs> but, anyway, so, in the January, he's from Calabria, down at the south of Italy, mm-hmm. and that's where all his family is. So there was like a, a old farm that he has like a soccer school down there, and also we went down there, stayed there, and his uh, <coughs> his dad pulls up, lads, just say 60, 70, and a red Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's dancing. So his dad's it. clearly <laughs> enjoying <laughs> life right now. So I was like. <laughs> Are you driving? Are you driving that? You're driving the X5. He's like, doesn't bother me. That's mad, one of those. Especially the Italian culture. You think Italian culture guys that would get back yeah, money? That yeah. would be. They would be like his dad, yeah. like driving about in red yeah. Ferraris and. I think I think you fine. would look at Gattuso if you didn't know he was a footballer and think <clears throat> that's a Flash Harry. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. The very sort of guy would be yeah. driving about in all these fancy yeah. models and. Oh, like, he'll come on with Dolce Gabbana and stuff like that. There, but he's. He looks after himself, obviously, right. but not like... I like hearing stuff like that. Is there any other players that, let, that you go, fucking calm down, man, with the money spending and all the gear and the, the motors and where you go, this guy needs to watch what he's doing? <laughs> <laughs> Is that your question? Man? Listen, you don't, you don't need to watch your day when you've got EBTs on the go, no? Okay, that's the fuck. This is a Seth Cobingo, man. Third striker. No, not really, no. No. Do you ever see young players, but right, that have like that are doing well? They've maybe just broke into the first team, and you go, you need to go, you man, you better watch what you're doing. Like, don't be getting too excited. You need to pay your dues. Football's like, changed these days. Is it? Yeah, they got folk in their ears to like something for doing that. When I was twenty-one, mm. I had a white Bentley. Worst, worst mistake. Obviously, I was, I was enjoying life, at uh-huh. Rangers and everything they got there. But I was just like thinking now. I was like, what am I doing? And all the older players like Davy were on the team must be thinking. He's just prick. Uh, hey, <laughs> like, but everything's changed now. Like young players are wearing Rolexes. Like yeah. they're getting finance out for Rolex. But they're getting everything. Uh, it wasn't. It's different now. Like they don't clean boots. They, they 
that chat to older players now, like everything. So the rest on it too. Seen nothing. <laughs> Aye, that must be that must be a bit of an eye opener. <coughs> there must be times you're like, I'm going to punch your fucking. No, head. I think. I Kelly were trying to get that. Like, there's a lot of young older players in the team that just try and help the young players and sends them in the right, obviously down the right right road. But I've been the teams. I guess it's difficult now because you're if you're playing for a top team, you're on minimum five grand a week now, oh, yeah. and yeah. you're playing. You might even you'd be in under 18s mm-hmm. I remember I was on two hundred fifty pound. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was actually on two hundred fifty pound when Fulham made a bid for me, Laurie Sanchez. I was like between three and four million. I was on two hundred fifty pound. Wow. And I remember I was so stitched up on the bus. <coughs> a bid came in, Burnley knocked the back. So all the all the lads, senior players in the bus, were heading down to Plymouth of us, they're like, Mate, you have to be on more money. Go and see him when you land, when you get down to Pl- Plymouth. Knock on the manager's door and say, I want to be on five grand a week. You deserve it. <laughs> I was like, do you think I should? They're like, aye, damn right. Aye. So, checked into the room. Went to find, to find where the manager was. Steve Cottrell was. So, um, knocked on his door. No answer. Knocked again. He's opened it. He's shaving. He's went, what? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, can I, uh, can I speak to you? He's like, what is it? He's like, I've been thinking, like, if you're knocking back bids from Fulham and teams Rangers and Celtic, I was like, you're going to have to give me money. He's like, what do you think you should be on? I'm like, five grand? He's like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> so I went down to dinner. I was like, the lads are like, do you see him? I was like, aye, but just close the door in my face. He's like, what do you ask for? I went, so I went and asked for what you stole me. I was like, five grand? He's like, she didn't ask for five grand. <laughs> like, you told me all the way from six hours on a bus from Burnley to Plymouth, you told me go and ask for five grand. I was like, 19, 18 at the time. But, no, just, no, cheers, but, but see, when you go for like, <clears throat> you're, you're getting 250 per a week and then you do get your first wage and you're looking at it going, fuck, you know, man, what can I do with this? I'm going to buy a white Bentley. That's it, mate. I certainly know what I was like when I signed up to G4 players. <laughs> <coughs> I'll tell you one about... Gertusso told me this about him and Gaza when he was talking about Gaza. Yeah. He first came to Rangers, he was 18. So back then all the, all the players would go get a boat and go and lock Lomond. So oh. like, we know. So the girls were like, no, oh, come. Yeah, all the players are going. He's like, it'll be a few hours, it'll be fine. So, uh, hours went past and Reno's went up to Gaza and went, so this is Reno telling the story, he said, Gaza, how long? He's like, ah, we won't be long, won't be long. <laughs> Reno just goes to me, he's like, laugh, three days, <laughs> three <laughs> days on that boat. <laughs> like, we'll let you off, we'll let you off. <laughs> three days I was on that boat. Yeah, uh, three, day, three days he was on the, on the, on the boat, honestly. <laughs> He touched on there uh, them turning down bids. It, there was always talk of you moving to Celtic when you just before you went to Rangers. Was was that like legit solid interest? And how close was it? <coughs> like, was there, how close was it for you to maybe move there? There was talk. Um, obviously, I remember speaking to Gordon Strachan. Um, he rang and he was like, "Oh, just like don't worry about the the religions part of it. The fans will love you." I know what the type of player you are. You give one hundred and ten percent the whole time, but don't worry about it. You'll you'll be fine. I was like, ah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. So, but I was where I'm from. I could never have right. oh, went to Celtic. Obviously, the top top club. But it was always Rangers, and I remember Owen Coyles came in <clears throat> to manage Burnley at the time, and I think I played since he came in. I played the majority of the games I think the plan was to sell me in ja- in the summer to get money in for the club so Owen obviously being mm-hmm. favourable to Celtic mm-hmm. he's like uh, Celtic I think Celtic's the one so I have to <laughs> <laughs> yeah so in- nah, you well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up having a call and I was like I'm not going to Celtic mm-hmm. I'll stay at Burnley like I'm I'm not going to Celtic. Is there any interest for Rangers at this point at yeah, all? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there is, right? Aye. So I was like, I, I'm not going to Celtic. I'm, I'll just stay. I'll, I'll, I'm happy at Burnley. I'll, I'll play on. I'll, 
I'll be fine. So I ended up accepting uh, Rangers bid. Uh, Martin Bain at the time. I remember walking in. He's walked into his <laughs> office. He's like, with his son, it's that shit. <laughs> Lafferty linked the Celtic or Lafferty, Lafferty talks the Celtic or something what it was I was like oh, it's paper talk <laughs> but like it was uh, I, I couldn't have went I didn't, it's I not, couldn't it's even not, want I take to go, it it's not it quite just, so much the, like, the religion part you're saying that Strachan had mentioned the religion <coughs> sectarianism and stuff like that he's obviously seeing it from the Celtic fans point of view but then you've got to take into the account where you come from and, and you know what I mean and that's you probably wouldn't have been able to step foot back in there you know if you'd have went to yeah. Celtic must have, I, must have been a nightmare to be honest with you I just had to take everything into account like it was I think a few years before it was the Lennon got the yeah. the yeah. threat obviously before he kept in the Northern Ireland and mm-hmm. stuff like that there it's just you don't want to test the water with it mm-hmm. um, obviously being a Rangers fan it was just a no-brainer for me. Aye. Everyone mm. would love to play for Rangers. I remember racing home from football practice to go straight to watch Rangers v Celtic. Mm-hmm. Every old firm, I was watching it. So, it was a no-brainer whenever Rangers came in and you know, it was just, I had to go because there was bids from Premiership teams mm-hmm. on a lot more money. Um, Celtic actually offered more money to Burnley bigger sign on fee for me and more money but I was like nah I think it, like, when it's when it's that situation that you're in I, I think we would all be the same as uh, well your heart your, your heart rules your head yeah. you know and especially yeah. if say for example right sell it we're off on 20 grand a week more then you would maybe say right well hold on but when it's fine no, no, I, <laughs> 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 uh, I stand corrected but it, you say you would just, right let's say let's say it wasn't Celtic right let's say it was Liverpool for talking sake and they offer 20 grand a week more than Rangers I, I think the boyhood thing doesn't come into it at that point in time but when it's fine margins it's you're definitely always going to pick the team that you, you supported as a boy yeah because obviously, I never thought I'd ever ever get the chance to mm-hmm. play for Rangers. Even at the start, I was like, never. Mm-hmm. Always, I always believed in my ability, and but as a young boy, but I was never. Rangers were massive to me. Like we, Rangers were bigger than any team in the Premier League because mm-hmm. they were my team and Celtic as well. Because I, I was always focused on the old firm, so they were like the best teams in the world. Mm-hmm. And obviously, the old firm is being. Mm-hmm. So I was always like, never thought I could reach Rangers standard. Right. So when they came in, I was like, 100%. No, what I say, nobody, no. What, yeah. what about, what about your, your first, you signed for Rangers, what's so the, the first old firm game, is it the 3-0 at Ibrox maybe? No, I'm trying to think what your first. Either the way, first one, what was your experience like, your very first old firm? Were you, obviously, you were the, you know, a lot more aware of, the old yeah. firm game compared to like other people coming from different countries coming to <laughs> <laughs> I know I know the point you're trying to make Gredo you yeah. know it's what was your experience well, I, want like him, I want him to explain <laughs> what were you to explain yeah, there <laughs> I'm just saying you would have known oh, about the old firm game more than foreigners and stuff like that it wouldn't have need to have been built into you as much as what it would <laughs> Basically, what he's saying is, uh, you didn't need to explain to you, but big no. yellow bits. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. <clears throat> yeah, well, I don't think seeing it on TV, uh, to obviously compared to playing in it, completely different. Like I've played in. Okay, nothing's got to come close to the old firm. Mm-hmm. But I've played in like the, the Lancashire Derby, the Norwich and. Ipswich and Kelly Nair, you've done that yet? Yeah. Uh-huh. All these, all the fans and people to do with the club, they're like, you'll feel nothing like this. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and you're like, fuck mm-hmm. I. But when's the game going to start? <laughs> it, it, it's miles away I, from anything. I. And obviously, the situation now with only 800 fans, I think that's obviously, the, uh, it's obviously, I think it's came from Rangers. They've cut the tickets first. I think it was Probably the biggest mistake they've done because I agree. I've always said Rangers fans were the best at Celtic Park and uh, vice versa. Basically, mm-hmm. so, yeah. It was <clears throat> miles above everything. And I, a lot of players don't witness that now. I'm obviously one of the lucky ones 
to have I been there. That's a good point. The amount of players that probably the hub miss coming out. That's all. It is. Walking seeing the Brunlin and seeing it all. You see the small section. Because when because that must get is it get you gone when you come out and you look to yeah. the brim and you see it, you're like, yeah. like I'm up for this. It was amazing. Walk out of Ibrox, and you just see. Mm-hmm. They feel Brimley Road just feel like yeah, I know. Celtic, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Rangers fans are different, but it was just Celtic mm-hmm. how the, how they brought themselves along to the old firm away from home, mm-hmm. and it was the same with Rangers. They're mm-hmm. just completely different because it's your die hard, hard fans that are there. Mm-hmm. So what? it was probably the best, and I, I hope one day that they'll go back to that because I think it plays a massive part mm-hmm. on the atmosphere. I agree with you, but what I will say, I don't know if, if either of you has been to a game at Ibrox without the Celtic fans there. Yeah. I've been with them. He won the last year. And and I, was at the, oh. I was at the game in February as well. <coughs> I think when you're actually there and you're watching your team winning, as, as you've done and as we've done, it's better in a strange way, but for the whole spectacle and yeah. it being on TV and stuff like that, <coughs> it totally takes away. Yeah. It totally does take away. Well, if you're winning, obviously, you've got... Mm. 45,000 fans that's literally bouncing but it's just the whole atmosphere because Celtic fans never stop singing even mm-hmm. if they were losing they were always singing I remember beach balls everything was being mm-hmm. flung down it was amazing mm-hmm. and the Celtic Park with Rangers fans as well but as I said I hope one day they, they do decide to bring back 8,000 or whatever as I mean because it's like <clears throat> See, you, you you speak to folk for like different countries. You go, you talk about how big the old firm is. Mm. If you took them to a game and you wanted them to experience the old firm, you would want you want to feel. Yeah. 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 Essentially, you're going to have Look to take that. you're going to have to take me to a semi final you know, at Hamden. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But the atmosphere will be shite. I know. Hey, Hamden, you say that. Hey, fucking is Hamden. Track. You know about players that want about Hamden. That's Hamden. It's different, isn't it? Because it's so, so far, far away, back man. as well, and half, mm. the, half the size. But I mean, what about Hart Stinker? So the amount of players I remember speaking to Barry Ferguson, he said, I mean, that that atmosphere going there as a Rangers mm. player Aye. because it's so close in. It was the worst place. I hate it going to Tynecastle more than Celtic Park. Yeah, I so was mm-hmm. Honestly, I and obviously I'm, so true. I'm there on Wednesday night in the club. So oh, so I, yeah. so Tell me this one. Did you were you at Hearts when they played at Murrayfield? Yeah. What was that like? What was it seventy thousand seater? Uh, it was only fifteen thousand. So it's sparse. Scored a screamer against Rangers. Yeah. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. I like top corner. Yeah, that was yeah. a peach. That's right. It was is that, good. Is that a day Kenny Miller scored as well? Yeah, Kenny Miller. Aye, came, aye, that was the day he, he, he brought just back, came back, didn't he? Scored two, I think. Scored two, that's right, aye. But it was, it was, uh, it was nice. The stadium's an amazing stadium and mm-hmm. the pitch was perfect as well, but... You need to fill it though, didn't you? Let me just say, say, like, going forward, the favourite Scotland, I believe, are bidding for the, the Euros, aren't they? Um, would you expect them to use Murrayfield? Do you no, think, I'm like, that sure. is a, full, a fully packed yeah. stadium? Do you think it would be unbelievable? Yeah, I think aye. so, yeah. Welcome back to Picking Two Shots. Now the competition that's taken over the full of the internet, social media. People are talking about it everywhere they go. It's your chance to win a PS5. All you need to do is guess who the mystery voice is on the show. Now, we need to stress that it's no fucking Gordon Smith. <laughs> we can confirm it is not Gordon Smith. We've been tweeted, we've been... Well, actually, see, to be honest with you, we'll just clear this up right now as well. To enter the competition... Instead of replying on YouTube comments and Twitter, that's good, we appreciate it, but it's going to get missed because the answer could get lost in the shuffle, so we need to take it officially, we really, really do. So what we're doing is directing you to a pint and two shots.co.uk, fill out the form there so it's official. We don't want somebody guessing it will and early on a YouTube video and then they miss the chance of winning the PS5. So we've had two clues already. The first clue was basically that they played in Scottish fit, but the second clue was that they hit with the right fit. Here is the third clue to who's the dafty. I have played for seven clubs in total. And there you have it, guys. He's played for seven clubs in total. Right. <clears throat> played in Scottish football. Kicks with the right fit. Seven clubs. Is it seven Scottish clubs? Well, we're here. Sus- subscribe to the YouTube channel. <laughs> Is it seven Scottish clubs? Uh, don't right, look, there's no point here, there's no point guessing. We want to put it over to you. 
Get your entries in a pint and two shots.co.uk. A PS5 is up for grabs. It is not Gordon Smith. Gordon Smith. Not just a PS5, by the way. A copy of FIFA. And, and an, an extra, extra controller. controller. And a Gradle doll. You, Which, by the way, you can get at gradlewrestling.bigcartel.com. Away you fucking go. Product placement there. Yeah. Gradlewrestling.bigcartel.com. And if you mention that you're a listener, I'll even sign it. And once, <laughs> you're, once you've been on to Gradle's website, have a listen to the Great Scott Cinema Club podcast. Aye. Brought to you by Chris Toll and Keezy. And after you've listened to that, turn on BBC Scotland and you can watch River City. I'm in it. Also listen to the Go Radio, f- f- no, the Go Radio Breakfast Show, Monday to Friday, 6 until 10, and Wrestling Daft with producer John McNally in Grado. Yeah. Right, here, can I touch on this, right? And you don't need to speak it if you, you don't want it, but I'm thinking about people listening to this that might can relate to it, but the whole gambling thing and the addiction and stuff like that, is that, is that all dealt with? Obviously, you know, people say addiction... It never, you know, you'll always be an addict. It's just waking up every day and having to deal with it and deal with the consequences and the, and the urges and stuff like that. I agree, totally agree with you. I remember, obviously, Austin, I mentioned before, played a massive part, and I remember going to AA. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, not AA. GA. Ah, was was AA as well. <laughs> <laughs> no. That was Tuesday. <laughs> By the way, no bastard knows who you are. Everywhere you go, you're anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to my GA meetings and I, they helped massively uh, you, you meet normal people that's not going to judge you because that was the that, that was probably the biggest thing for me um, that stopped me from getting help before going to a meeting and getting in the press and stuff like that there and people looking at me in a different way and being embarrassed basically but I remember going to the GAA meeting and one of my first meetings there was a celebration and a wee old guy getting his we coin 30, 30, mm-hmm. 35 years wow. amazing 35 years so we're all having a wee cup of tea after and he came up to me <clears throat> and he went I said to him sorry I'm, I need to ask like, 35 years like surely after a year two mm-hmm. years you're you're healed day. he's like Every day I will Aye. not. I will never be healed. Aye. I was the same as my dad. My dad was no, an alcoholic, and he was sober for forty years. Yeah. And he, he always still referred to yeah. himself as an alcoholic yeah. mm-hmm. because he says once you're an alcoholic, yeah. you're, well, an you're, always, you're always in recovery. Ain't it's, you? It's, it's, a, it's a disease. Yeah. I mean, for folk, some folk they wake up and it's the first thing they think about, and it's just about battling. Right, how am I going to get through this day? Go to your bed at night, next day again. Try it. It's uh, taking it every day as yeah. it comes in. You never, it never ever leaves you. It's like. You will never, never be healed, and you always need that help. So, like I've, I've had spell not so much now, but if I'm playing on a Sunday, because mm-hmm. obviously I've, I got done for for betting on football. Um, it was two stupid games. I was in in the bookies doing the, I was doing horses and dogs. Ended up a couple of grand down and had a grand left, and I was my missus, my wife now. Was on the phone calling me. I'm like, where are you? I was like, just round the corner for a Chinese. Um, this was Saturday night. Um, but we're going to an engagement party. So I was like, I'll be there in ten minutes. So I'm looking to see what what's on, and there's two Spanish football bets on or games on. I was like, fuck it. Both, both teams have scored both. Mm-hmm. And then they've took the bet. They've uh, but the the week girls went on. On the phone, I went. Is is there a problem? She went. No, no, just checking the odds. Anyway, I was getting on there and then. Wow. Fuck so wow. I ended up winning the bet, but I couldn't couldn't collect it because sorry, if I wanted to collect it, I had to walk in with my passport. Jeez. So there it was Bye. all getting all done already. So I ended up getting fined heavily from from the FA in England, but it was like three months maybe before the Euros. I was like, I've absolutely messed this up for myself. I'm getting a ban here. That's not going to be weeks or games. It's going to mm-hmm. be a lengthy ban. I'm going to miss the Euros. Mm-hmm. I've done so well getting there. Then a massive part. I'm not even going to be there. So they've hit me. I was at, in the meeting with the FA. I was so honest. I was like, listen, what I've done, 
I'm not blaming anyone. It was my fault. I know I was well aware of what I was doing. But since I've been a young boy, I've always bet fiver. Bet. What age are you at this point? I was it 16, so 28, 27. Right. So I'm getting done. And I just said, listen, I've, I've had a problem for years since I was... I actually think I was... I said 12 because I was always on the, the puggies and all the, machine, right. and the fruit machines. So I was honest with them. And I think that probably helped me, being so honest. And they gave me the guy's number in uh, Sporting Chance, Tony Adams. Oh, yeah. So I, I started seeing him, but I wasn't ready to come. I wasn't. Like, I went, drove from Norwich to London two hours every Wednesday or Thursday, every Wednesday when I was off. But. I see myself going to the bookies around the corner when I left his meeting. Oh, I didn't bet in football after that. I was like, I'm just stupid. I was just threading water to try and uh, win my money back. Horses, dogs, even virtual dogs and everything. What I was going to say to you there was you mentioned that you were fined heavily by the club. Is that that's maybe counter counterproductive? You know, because if you're getting fined by the club, your first thought says. I I'm mean, going to gamble them to fight it off. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So <clears throat> you wonder yeah. why the club's doing that. Yeah, yeah. Like the club could have probably done a lot. Could have fined me a lot more. But there were Alex Neil was at the time. He he done all right for me. Like Alex, he's a he's a good guy and a good manager. But I had a guy agree this. And they could have, but they they did kind of push me down to get getting help as well. But um, I wasn't ready to stop. Mm-hmm. Aye, you need. You're not going to be able to beat it unless you know unless you've got a problem. If you're, you're ready to beat it, yeah, yeah, I yeah, to you on the way in here, didn't mm-hmm. I? We were talking about something. I says you can't help someone unless nah. they want to be helped. Aye. 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 I totally Aye. agree. Aye. Like, mm. So I was like leaving the meeting, going around the corner on the way to, back to Norwich, oh. stopping and just, just betting. But until until I got the hearts and like everyone knew, all my teammates knew. Right, I was a massive. Like I was betting on everything. Like I remember lying in bed and if I woke up I'm down the side of my bed betting on anything the table tennis mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just okay. anything like I was putting on not thousands but just say a thousand to win a hundred uh, just I was just, just to win something so when I, going back to what you said like, when I first came out mm-hmm. it was massive weight off my shoulders I bet you and my wife she was like getting messages from people not even to do with football but she was also getting messages from footballers wives or girlfriends and so for me coming out it helped mm-hmm. not uh, only people because I've spoke to some players obviously I was like listen if you if you need to speak um, you can speak to me mm-hmm. so but the amount of people that came that had nothing to do with the game was speaking to my wife how she handled it because right. it's a big part yeah. of her life as yeah. well like, it's affecting her well, yeah. like it, it could have affected me and my wife a lot more right. um, if I wasn't in the situation I was in playing for a premiership team and right. earning good money it probably did but there's there's a lot more people it affected in a different way like obviously when you if you're working as a just no disrespect as a postman. Mm-hmm. Like, Destroys lives. Yeah, it does. Yeah, right. I, I, like, mm-hmm. Some people, some of the messages Vanessa received on, on Instagram, mm-hmm. it's like, um, like, it's boiling point here. It's, it, 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 I need help. Losing the house. Yeah, yeah, were yeah, these yeah, people like, messaging your my wife yeah, telling see, her yeah, what like, was going on? My husband's a gambler. Mm-hmm. How do you, how did you like, get by? And Aye. How, like things to help you obviously Vanessa helped a lot of people as well and it was it was good that we could help some people you know what there will be people watching this because I know some some of my pals and you feel like saying what's what are you doing man same yeah. man like, not, not just gambling uh, as well but it's all walks of life you know what I mean like, uh, yeah addiction, addiction as a whole like uh, if it's alcohol if it's drugs if it's mm-hmm. gambling it's addiction and I think we've all got people but, in our lives that right. we know that have got addiction problems you mm-hmm. know right. um, ask me a wee question yep. is that a fan? see do you think it's relative to like obviously you guys are well paid so do you think it's 
So do you think you gamble more because you've got the security of that? So you think it's all right, I'm, I'm fine, I'm, I've got this money coming in, whereas some days you mentioned a postman, they're not really gambling with money like they really don't have. Yeah. Do you think it's relative to your wages, basically? I think we... Well, I don't say we as in, I mean, footballers and people that earns a lot of money or people that has a lot of money, they have more of a chance of winning the back. Like, I could go the next day and I could mm-hmm. go again. Basically, uh, the more you It's yeah. like that film. It's like that lottery film you were telling us about. The, so, the, yeah. the more you spend, the yeah. more likely like, you are to win. I would always, if there's no... Nothing to bet on, or that was a mad for a roulette. Never went to hear yeah. the casino, it was always online. Yeah. I would always go again tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And online, it, it's it's fixed. You, you lose one day, you know you're getting it back two days later because you're going to be playing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, like it's harder because if, if well, I keep on saying about a postman, but I was just. Anyone that doesn't know Aye. the job, mm. if you spend all your money, you're gonna have to wait until the end of the month, or mm. you might borrow money of people to to try and win that back, and I get yourself in the bigger hole. So, I think it helps. It, it helped me to win money back, as in because I had money to spend. So, it is harder for people with a lesser mm. job or less paid than possibly. So, where are you now, where? I take it it's still meetings or you this, I don't go to meetings because like before I couldn't watch or even my wife would obviously have brother-in-laws that mm-hmm. watch football and obviously enjoy a coupon and stuff to get mm-hmm. there but my wife wouldn't let me watch horse racing or nothing mm-hmm. but now I, I, I've been six years and 11th of September um, I'll be I'll be clean but I can now sit and watch a game. Like, I couldn't... Before, I couldn't watch anything. It's like on your phone, you're going, aye. Mm-hmm. And it was always, like... Making the excuse it's always for an go. interest in yeah, it. Like, it's just for an interest in it. Got, it got to a point that I wasn't even arsed about the money. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't care. I just wanted the... The buzz. The buzz. Mm-hmm. Like, I could win so much money that I was end up kind of having to hide it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, Where's that came from? Yeah, so yeah, because if, if I said to my wife, "Oh, those ten grand, I want it." Want from what? It's a question. It's a question. And then I'm having a lie to her, so I used to just keep it in the account. Aye. And when you have money in the a betting account, you're like, you just play with it. Just keep going. It's, it's tokens, and it's not money. actual money. Yeah. It's tokens. But when you say about not actual money, the betting companies, I, I, I would love to come up with. Something that to stop all betting companies to have any say in football. Like, well, see, I mean, it's every Premier League club, honestly, it's, is it the eighty percent of them yeah. that's all like sponsors? Back in the day, it was cigarettes, right? Remember, yeah, like, yeah. Benson yeah. and Edges and all that, and Marlborough and, and stuff. Like you've got the, the William Hill Scottish Cup and stuff. You got this. I'm like, bet friends. You're watching a game of football and you're you're getting hit with half time. Rangers, next, next, yeah, next, next goals. Like Ray Winston. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to get a group of people that were strong enough to try and get that out. Mm-hmm. But Let's start it. Uh, exactly. Let's do it. Let's do it here. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But you can have it on your wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember I didn't, I didn't bet for maybe a week I was. And I got a message because I was with a company that you could bet and clear at the end of the month. So I remember I was I didn't bet for about a week, and I got a message. Um, I was just lying in the house, got a message. Oh, we've gave you a loyalty bonus. That's three grand. I was like, oh, brilliant. I've ended up betting at three grand, but I got it up to like ten, uh, nine, nine five. But I lost it in like a few hours, mm-hmm. and I'm raging. I'm like, I've, I've lost all that money. I ended up betting my own money. Chasing it, man. Chasing it, man. That's the that same so, thing you back yeah, in. Like that. I, 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 ended up, I ended up losing a lot of money that day, but it was just because I had money. Mm-hmm. I could have took the six and a half grand, aye, or whatever aye. it was, out of my account. It's yours that you've made for that. I wouldn't be buzzing because it was free money, but the fact I lost it... Mm-hmm. 
It's just got me going again. And do you know what they do as well? They offer the free bets, right? And then when you take the free bet, you've got to bet the free bet so many times before you can withdraw the yeah, cash. Yeah. So there needs to be some sort of regulation brought in for yeah. it. I mean, they did they did stop the roulette in the actual shops. You can yeah. only the maximum you can bet now is two pound. Was it? Where, yep. Whereas I was going in after work every single day yeah. and putting fifty quid in yeah. it. You well, know what I mean? When so, I was betting, there was one spin was five. No, well, it was a hundred because mm-hmm. the win you, you win a hun- uh, you win five hundred maximum mm-hmm. spin. Um, is, there, is there something have you kind of thought about obviously you've had this experience and you speaking out is going to help loads and loads of folk is that something that you'd maybe fancy doing once you've you know hung up the boots would you want to get into like dealing with football players that are having these issues you know there is a, there is a lot isn't there? There's a, yeah. you've heard a, about well, a lot uh, John mm-hmm. Hudson he brought me to so I, I used to go to the GA meeting in the West End mm-hmm. I thought because I was living up in East Liberia at the time, and I was like, I can't go there. I think the the closest one was near Celtic Park, and I was like, ah, I can't go there. So I went to the West End, and then John Hartson, I got speaking to John, and he took me one miles away. I was, ended up following him. It took me about two hours to get there. And he, he said to me, he's like, this is, this will be severe. Mm. And I was, I don't want to, Talk about it because obviously it was, was yeah, yeah. someone else's sure. story, of course. <laughs> but it was severe, and I was like, "But I grew up watching John battering Rangers most of the time." But <laughs> someone like him coming to me and helping me, and he, he played a massive part. And I was speaking to him uh, end of last season when we played Inverness. He was up there with Martin O'Neill doing some. Speaking in right. the hotel we were staying at, so I was speaking to him, and he was first thing he asked me how how am I, and he he helped me massively as well. Um, and any time we we see each other, we always see how how we are. But people like that, there's always that there's always going to be help out there. Mm, that speaks volumes. Yeah, that yeah. shows you that there's so <coughs> much there's things out there that are bigger uh, than football, yeah. and that's bringing it like, in. Do you know what I mean? There's always going to be help, and yeah, the biggest thing for me, I said it was the embarrassment, mm-hmm. especially. Coming from the Celtic fans, Aye. and I remember, I remember my first game after coming out was against Hibs. Mm-hmm. I got pelters about putting on. I've got a coupon on. We were doing warm up. I've got a coupon on. I thought, oh, this, this dicks in the stand. But mm-hmm. it's the people. It's the that's the life we were living in right now. Or we've always lived in is the embarrassment of what other people say. Mm-hmm. It's not even about your family. It's it's the people. What people, people think of you? Think of you. Aye, aye. I, I think, it's a horrible I, thing, that. A lot of Celtic fans. It's how you're perceived by others, coming. man. You think about that. Yeah, a lot of Celtic fans came, mm-hmm. reached out and to wished, you, and I wished me the best, and reached, you reached out to me, and um, some players did as well. And I think everybody knows that there's there's football, and then there's human beings. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And like. Obviously not the same situation, but like getting back to what we were saying about Walter Smith, mm. you know, you see the human part of it, yeah. and you put yourself in that position, mm. and if there's people that don't have any sort of empathy yeah. for somebody that's in that position, then let's be honest, they yeah, can't be a very nice person yeah. at all, you know? That, does, does, that, that says a lot about that person. Yeah. Yeah. Position. I mean, you know, yeah. like, any, like you're saying, the decent people mm-hmm. are going to be reaching out, going yeah. to be helping, they're going to be understanding. But there's... For, for anyone, but for footballers, because they're in the limelight or whatever mm-hmm. profession you are, there's always help, and there's the, the backing and the support you get will be mind blowing for yourself. And like, if anyone ever wanted to come and speak to me, like, you'd get in touch with you guys and you can pass mm-hmm. to them. Yeah, 100%. Like, even if I've played against them or, or anything. Even Charlie McGrew? Even definitely. Like, I can tell matter. you. I can tell you what help folk. No, hundred percent. Like, because I've, I've been there. I've been at my lowest. Mm-hmm. That, like, the lowest ever. Mm. Uh, but I've always had the money to back it up. But it's 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 how shit you feel. Uh, um, how you're letting people down. So a shame. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you so think like, about your family as well. You know, but obviously you're you're in a high paid job. You know, your family should be comfortable and stuff like that. That's just something that can put that at threat. Yeah. So, you know, you've got more than yourself to think about. Yeah. However, there's only one person that can really combat yeah. it, and it is yourself. And if you go out there and you ask for the help, the help's always going to be yeah. there. 
so it's it's clear you're talking about it though, mate. Oh, no, 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 I'll, I'll, always, I'll always help anyone, no matter who or where you're from. A coffee, yeah. Wait yeah. a yeah. minute, come on, hang We'll have a coffee what, after. What, 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 <laughs> you'll just dump the fucking machine off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what about the St. Mullen game at the weekend? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> One now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, Kel, that is superb because, as I said, I've said it before, there'll be people watching this, oh, Western Scotland, that will have issues, oh, addiction, gambling issues, and for you to come on and talk about it, be comfortable about it and offer help, then that can only be positive for folk. Absolutely. No, doubt. It's definitely good to talk and for anyone that is in the situation, in the situation uh, I was in, 100% talk, and as one of you said, you won't get over it until you're willing to come out. And uh, you're, you're ready yourself. Right, so, unless you're ready, so... <laughs> Welcome back to a Pint and Two Shots. We're now going to play a game of How Well Do You Know Yourself? Edition one with Big Kyle Laffery. Kyle, we're going to ask you a couple of questions here, right? And you have to try and guess what the answer is. First question. You scored the winner for Rangers at Easter Road to win the title in 2010. Who provided the assist? Kenny Murray. Oh! oh! Right away. Well done. Ding. <laughs> Straight off the bat. Right, number two. At Palermo, the fans called you Dylan Gall. Do you know why? I look like the fiction. No, no, hero. It's like a. I don't even know who he was, to be honest. Can but seemingly, I look like the guy that. It's a book. Oh, yeah, he's there. Right, For the listeners that don't know, he was a double, a Dylan Dog, which is an Italian comic book character. You also get, do you know, get the geezer that sings him that they, they did that program, they turn around the seats. What do you call that again? The voice. Fucking the voice. What man? The, the, uh, I know who. The fella for the script. Ah, oh, the script. Honestly. The guy for the script. The the script. See, them, uh, see the amount of people, the amount of times people came up and, to me and said that. Did you see that? Uh, he, I, I don't see mate, it. Mate, he's a pound shot kill after. You don't have anything. I wish. They're an Irish man as well, aren't they? Aye. Where was your dad around about the time he was born? He's going to write the songs. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, number three. <laughs> number three, your first game for Burnley was against Crew, the 6th of August 2005. You came on as a sub for who? Oh, I think I've got him. I'm nearly sure Giff Noel Williams was on the pitch at the time. Andy Gray? <laughs> Do you want one more start with it? Gareth O'Connor. Do you remember him? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no way. I've just, you were actually in the comic as well. Look, later, Lafferty was later written into an issue of the publication. That's what I'm famous in Italy for. <laughs> <laughs> I think that actually is. Kyle, I don't think that that's the, the character. I think that's the character. Yeah, that's Kyle. they've done a, a sketch of me and the guy. Me one of them, ah, that's just double. That's just double. Ah, that's just fucking spitting in the gym. <laughs> right, next question, Grado. Yes, a team had to delete... No, 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 the one before that, number four. Number four. Next page, number four. Right, it? number four. You have 20 international goals. Who was your 20th against... Azerbaijan. Oh, oh, he's doing it right. oh, Just like that. Just like that. Yeah. It's fucking five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, a team had to. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Plus, Do you plus me to get this question. Do you take this one, Tom? No, <laughs> I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Right, a team had to delete a tweet announcing your signing. Who was it and what was the tweet? I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sunderland. Uh-huh. Do you want to say to me or did you just fly away? I like you say <laughs> <laughs> He's seven foot and he plays the flip. Hey, 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 Do you know the tune? No, I, actually I don't. I've got it in my head that it's walking in a Lafferty Wonderland. Yeah, yeah. something on my... What was it? <laughs> <laughs> I said again, I couldn't hear it. Yeah, Greg, 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 cut it, cut it out. You had to be panicking I was like, he's seven foot tall and he plays football. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed a pint and two shots of vodka. For fuck's sake. That's nice, Kyle. <laughs> We've been pinting two shots. That's been Kyle Lafferty. 
Kyle, have you enjoyed yourself in this week's podcast? I absolutely loved it, lads. Thanks very much for coming on. And obviously talking about some very personal issues and stuff yes. like that. It was really good that you did it. No um, talking about the Rangers and that as well was very good. Aye. Um, and do you know what? One thing I remember, see how when we won the league at Tannadice in 2000, and what would it have been? Eight? Was it yep. 2008? 2009. Uh, was it two, oh, 2008 nine season. I remember I got my picture with you outside the Ibox and I went, yeah. it was a week later because we were playing the Scottish Cup a week later. And I met you and I went, Kyle, last Sunday was the best day of my life. <laughs> and what you went, you went, it was mine's as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that. You went, it was mine's as well. And I was like, I'm shaking your horn. Picture me, you know that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What about us? He's getting all of that and I still get slagged for Paul McStay buying me shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, before you go, but right, there's this important bit we need to do because Grado, he fancies himself a bit of a goalie, don't you? Well, I was a goalie. I had to get up for the liquor. <laughs> Who are you uh, going for? Uh, Taz Fissle. Taz Fissle. Team of Ross and Sulkits. Did you not say St Mirren or something about you? No? St Mirren or something about you when I was, fair, when I was 13, but I, I decided to go doing the wrestling route. So. <laughs> How's so, that going? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. Hey, the big family bash a few years Who's that? Do I come to one of the shows? Who's big family wrestling bash? Ah, right. Fifteenth October. I'll get, I'll get you along. I'll put you in the guest list. Where is this? The Pavilion Theatre in Glasgow. Oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait 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 or that fucking bo- fake boxing shit. Nah, come on, man. <laughs> what a champion. Who's, who's Kyle Frampton ever pinned? Ah, who's he ever pinned? <laughs> I don't know who Kyle, Kyle Frampton is. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, Kyle Frampton. Kyle Frampton. <laughs> Big Rangers, man. Yeah. Hey, he, would have been, he, could, he could get signed. They hate him and all that. He's ah, good. He could, could, could be a good wrestler. Aye. Aye. You're in that's it. That's where you're going after Aye. your football career Aye. ends. All right. Five, five years into it. Muscle. <laughs> five years into it, he'll have played for fucking 72 <laughs> <laughs> Right. But, Kyle, before you go, we need to go downstairs to the, what's it called, to the Performance Tires Arena. And me and you, we gave my penalties to try and beat the Grado. You've been the Python put. See you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> You've been the best. Oh, <laughs>Welcome to the Performance Tiles Arena in Wisha, North Lanarkshire, South Lanarkshire actually. And we are here with none other than Stephen Kyle versus... <laughs> Stephen Kyle? Fuck's <laughs> sake. <laughs> Stephen Pogden, Stephen Pogden versus Kyle Wafferty and beat the Grado. Toss up has happened and Stephen will go first. Up he steps. 1-0 Pogden. Here comes Lafferty, as they say, he's seven foot and he plays the flute. It's a big man, steps up, can he put one past Grado? Oh, he's pinning Kadam! Unbelievable stuff! <laughs> he's absolutely made a mockery of the Performance Tiles Arena. It's beautiful, that's one apiece. Up steps Purden, can he make it 2-1? And it's a save by Steve Way. Down there with his new Sondico gloves on. What a boy. Lafferty steps up for his second. He's not got the balls to go again, has he? Oh, and he's just broke the goals. Unbelievable from Lafferty. As I said last week, folks, you wouldn't have saved that with two gradles. Phenomenal finish from Lafferty. Up steps Purden. Can he make it to each? He can! And now we have Kyle to take the advantage. 3 2. If he scores here, it's 3 2. Kyle check it. Oh, he's missed it! He's tried to be a fly man! And he's missed! Which brings, if Purden can score here, he'll take the lead. 
That will make it 3-2 to Stephen Pogden. Up he steps. Oh, he's tried to be a fly man and he's made an arse of it. He's made an arse of it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Trying to be a wido. It's still two each. Can Kyle make it 3-2 here? Ooh. Oh, Rafford, he's missed! He's hit the post. Unreal, giving Pogden another chance to get back into the game. Here we go. If Steven scores, he makes it 3-2. Sudden death now. And Steve, we saved it. Now, the pressure's on Lafferty. Can he do it or can Grado stop him once again? He's going for the long run-up. Here we go, you could hear a pin drop in this arena. He's missed! Unbelievable! Bogdan has another life here. Bogdan steps up. Drills it low into Grado's bottom right hand corner. Those beautiful Sondico gloves couldn't keep that one out. Lafferty steps up with his Jordans on. What can he do here? Oh, he scored! That's three apiece. Three apiece now, or four apiece. I'm sure you'll be able to see the graphic at the bottom of the screen. I'm not quite sure. I've lost track, ladies and gentlemen. Pogden steps up. Can he beat Steve Lee once more? To make it 4-3. He scored! What a penalty from Pogden! That was like Arthur Boric in his pomp. Beautiful. It was like Arthur Boric in his pomp. Here we go. If Lafferty misses, it's all over. Oh! I scored! There was never any doubt about it. He keeps giving Stephen a wee bit of a wee bit of a hope, but I think he knows in his own his own mind that he's got this one in the bag. Pogden steps up. Steve Lee saves! And he also pulls his hamstring in the process. Well done, Steve Lee. If Kyle scores, it's all over. Oh, he tried to fly man again! Oh my goodness. I'll maybe get home for my work at some point tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Pogden steps up. He scores! Now, all the pressure back on Lafferty. What can he do? Oh, beautifully done. He has, not only has he scored, he's absolutely fucked up the GoPro in the corner of the net. Here we go. Pogden steps up. If he scores, Kyle needs to score to stay in the game. Oh, what a finish from Pogden. Beautiful. Struck into the top of the net like Jorg Alberts. Here we go. If Kyle doesn't score, it's all over. Up he steps. His patented long run up. Here we go. And he scores. Grado seems to have lost his ability to save these. And just as I say that, Steve Lee pulls one out the bag with his Sondico gloves on there. He was struggling to get his hands in it. I says, who do you think you are, OJ Simpson? Here we go. Kyle steps up. If he scores, he wins. Could it be curtains for Steve Lee? That remains to be seen, but up steps Lafferty. Ooh. He scores! It's all over! Ladies and gentlemen, that is a victory for Kyle Lafferty. And a victory 
for a pint and two shots. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next week at the Performance Styles Arena for Beat the Gradle.